Hello and welcome everybody. Been a while since I've done another tutorial, so I figured it was high time to do another one. Really sorry about the wait. Um, but uh here we go. <laughs> I'm gonna hit some high points. Um if I miss something that you may discover while playing uh using Stratcon inside Mech HQ while playing Mega Mech. I'm terribly sorry, but th these are kind of unscripted, as it were. So um Take what you can out of these and kind of go with the flow. But that being said, if you do have any questions about Stratcon, Mac HQ, Mega Mac, or any other parts of the software, um, you can always go on to the Mega Mac Discord. I'll have a uh, link to it on our YouTube for this video uh, down below. And um, or you can uh, come to our Discord as the Filthy Casual Discord, and there's a link to that from our Twitch page, and you can ask us questions there as well. Um, or you can comment below the video, <laughs> that works too. Um, I'll try to get back to you as fast as I can. But uh, without further ado, let's hop right in. All right, so. Uh, at some point while using the Mech HQ software, you will, and you do have Stratcon turned on, um, and I'll show you how to do that briefly, you will be able to see something similar to what you're seeing on the screen right now. Um, in order to turn on the Stratcon feature, we would go to File, Campaign Options, and go into the Against the Bot tab, all the way at the bottom, you see this one little tiny check mark down here. It says use Stratcon campaign rules. You want to make sure that's checked. And, and I cannot stress this enough because I've seen many campaigns messed up by this. And uh, I was given a little, little insight. Um, make sure you turn all the chances of battle and the intensity down to zero. That way, ATB won't be generating any traditional battles, just the battles used by the Stratcon campaign rules. Uh, you can turn off generate chase scenarios as well. Um, my group never really liked chase scenarios, so your mileage may vary, but that's how you turn it on. Uh, when you do turn it on, here all the way, if we were to start at the command center here, and this I'm using the Hand of Stire campaign that we we stream on Saturday nights as an example. You go all the way to the right of these tabs, you'll see ATP campaign state. And then you'll be greeted with this window. Uh, as you can see right now, we are currently in the middle of a contract on Hand of Stire. Um, so I'll just briefly go over the different sections and how they interact and uh, try to explain the best I can um, with how the... Uh, different parts of Stratcon work and how they interact with the rest of the campaign system. So over at the top, you will hear roughly towards the middle, you'll see the current campaign status. You'll find the name. Um, this name is traditionally the name given to it over in the, uh, the briefing room for the contract. So the year, the faction, roughly the system it's located in, if not the system it's located in, and then the type of contract. So we, it is 3072, we are working for Word of Blake on uh, Johnson Dale, uh, and it is a diversionary raid. Stated right up here at the top, the campaign tab. Uh, below that, engage hostile forces, pretty simple. Complete required scenarios and strategic objectives to fulfill contract conditions. Those are listed down here in this window. Your current victory points, your current support points, and then your deployment period for days. That, I'm, I'm not 100% sure that. A part of me feels like that's a placeholder for use for later things that uh, the developers are planning on putting in. I'm not 100% sure, take it as you will. Uh, I, it might be something along the lines of, as if you have a battle, say, on the fifth of a month, and the deployment period is zero, then you would deploy on the fifth. 
either that or the deployment period is the amount of time uh, between uh, when you're deployed and when you come back, but I believe those are also included down below. I'll show that here shortly. Um, but if, say, if you had a deployment period of two days and you had a battle on the fifth, then you would have to deploy forces to that battle on the third. So you have to kind of plan ahead. Like I said, not 100% sure on that, if you do know the answer to that question, please feel free to let me know. All right, below that, we also have manage support points and victory points. And if you click on that, it'll bring up this little window here. And in that little window here, I'll just put it right here for now. You can convert victory points to support points. You can convert support points to bonus parts. And if you have GM mode turned on up here next to the advanced stay button, you can add victory points and support points manually. Also, I'm not 100% sure what track scenario odds are. <laughs> Your mileage may vary. I, I'm not 100% sure what that means either. Uh, a lot of the different concepts in Stratcon are very new still, and so I, as well as everybody else, are still learning them as we go along. Um, the developer that is working on Stratcon, uh, as of the date of the recording of this video, uh, is currently on kind of a vacation mode. So what we have is what we have currently. Uh, there may be more features added later. So hopefully, <laughs> if those features get added and things improve um, at a later date, I will hopefully update this video with those features. But this is what we have currently. So, um, victory points are typically awarded depending upon the scenario that you're doing. Uh, and support points are awarded similarly, traditionally for convoy missions or where you're dealing with third party, um, party convoys, you're saving them, you're destroying them. It's just kind of like that extra added oomph um, but if you desperately need support points, you can also convert them from your victory points. Uh, support points are also used to add reinforcements reliably to a drop. And I'll show that here shortly as well. Uh, support points can also be turned into bonus parts as well, which is really nice. Uh, bonus parts are something that you can use in the repair bay. Uh, and I believe I showed off the repair bay in a previous tutorial uh, where you can immediately gain um, a part that you need to repair um, a friendly unit in your company and it's immediately delivered and it doesn't cost you anything. So if you have a campaign parts availability that is not being so nice because you're trying to order something difficult to get your hands on but yet your availability your campaign parts availability is low because you're doing a raid contract or something um, then bonus parts is really useful to have uh, to get those much necessary parts to repair um, key units that you'll be using down the line during your contract down below here we have all of our strategic objectives that we have to achieve before the end of the of the contract so a contract progresses over the course of in this case a month so we started in on august 1st and it's running until september 1st and it is currently august 1st because we just started so we have a month to complete these objectives and it will give you a readout like you don't have any objectives completed and then it'll tell you each individual objective. So we have to engage and defeat hostile forces one of three on track zero. And I'll go over that here shortly. Same thing, engage and defeat hostile forces zero of two scenarios on track one. And then we have to have a victory point count above zero by completing required scenarios. Pretty simple. And then <clears throat> outside of that, 
as I specified earlier, you have tracks. Tracks are different theaters of, of war or combat inside the confines of a contract space. So different parts of the planet that you currently reside on or have landed on or have dropped forces off on, um, these are different areas uh, of operation that you are attempting to achieve your goals in. So here we have track one, and this is kind of like a, an overall map off the left side. And then here we have, check the drop down, and we, then we have, or excuse me, track zero, and then we have track one, which is slightly smaller. Uh, there is no graphics for this yet. There is no uh, geography, there's no terrain, there's no fancy graphics or anything for this. It's just straight to the point as it sits right now, gets the information to you so you can make tactical and strategic decisions moving forward. So now we get to the bread and butter, the nitty gritty of the Stratcon tab, and that is the actual Stratcon map. Now, when you first start your Stratcon map on a contract after you've landed and you've done your deployment requirements and all of that stuff, it's gonna look something like this going to be a bunch of gray black squares with a bunch of green numbers on it don't worry there's a way around this so if we go all the way over to the briefing room over here on the right side you'll see your deployment requirements and so for this contract we have to deploy at least five forces so lances in this case since we are a mech company but two of those lances have to be set to scout. And I'll explain what each one does. It's very simple to understand if you going into it top to, you know, from top to bottom. So initially your role for each of your lances are gonna be unassigned. That's normal. If you click on it, you'll get a dropdown that says fight, defend, scout, or training. So, what these do is, is fight allows a unit to be deployed um, as a fighting force to uh, hostile uh, units on the Stratcon map, but that's all they're good for. They can't, they can scout, they can do all that stuff. You can set them to recon, but if you have a unit set as role to scout, to reconnaissance and you put them on the Stratcon map, not only do they uncover and discover whatever is in the hex that you're deploying them to, but they recon and discover everything in the hexes adjacent to the hex you're deploying them to. So scouting is really useful for uncovering large parts of the, of the track that you're attempting to uh, reconnoiter or recon or reconnaissance or whatever you want to call it. Um, but also to kind of figure out where the enemy forces are, where enemy facilities are located, and kind of make strategic choices for where you want to deploy what. Um, defend, typically, I personally don't use defend that often. Uh, and defend... Like if you were doing garrison duty or relief duty or cadre duty uh, and one of your objectives on the campaign state uh, map was to defend a facility from being taken by enemy forces, then you could possibly do that. But you would have to deploy the lance or forces that you wanted to that hex on the Stratcon map, and then you would have to tell them to stay deployed. And I'll show you how to do that in just short order. But defense basically gives you the ability to deploy landmines in defense of an area. Um, they're not really, they're about as useful as reconning uh, hexes on the Stratcon map as if they were assigned to fight. But if you want to bring in reinforcements during your campaign, so if you drop a lance on a hostile force, you can only ever reinforce 
with lances or units that are set to the fight role. Defend won't work. Defi uh, fight will. Um, so you want to make sure to, to keep them on fight. Unless you're actively having them sit on the Stratcon map to defend a friendly facility or what have you. Uh, next up, and last but not least, training. These are really good for uh, green and ultra green forces. So they don't really do anything. You don't really send them into fight. They don't really participate in combat. But if like, say you have a lance of new recruits that you brought into your company and you kind of want to train them up in the background while you're doing a contract with your actual soldiers and your actual mechs, and your veterans and your regulars and whatever, you can set them to training and it will train them up. The only downside is, is training has no effect on personnel that is regular skill level or higher, only ultra green and green. So keep that in mind. Otherwise, you'll more than likely not be using the training role nine times out of 10. Okay. So that's that. So we're going to go back to the Stratcon map here. And also on the Stratcon map, you'll see a couple of little red squares with text next to them. So for example, here, uh, we reconned uh, Hex 4-4, and we managed to run into a hostile tank base. Um, these different facilities have different bonuses uh, if they if you capture them, if they belong to you, but if they are in enemy hands, if they are hostile, they give your enemy those bonuses to any drops that occur on that track and only that track alone. So here you'll see the enemy has hostile comm center and a hostile tank base. These bonuses will only apply to battles on track zero. They will not affect any battles or scenarios or drops or whatever you want to call them on track one. Only facilities and forces on track one will affect any battles that happen on that track. Um, so if you have any questions about the bonuses or what you get um, for these individual Facilities, I think I have a list somewhere around here. Let me see if I can pull it up really quick. I know we have it pinned in our mech lab on our Filthy Casual Discord server, but I'll just briefly go over it really quick for you. So the mech, tank, arty, air, and arty bases adds an art allied or enemy reinforcements to scenarios of the corresponding type. So if we were to own this, so instead of it being a hostile tank base, it is an allied tank base, then we would get extra reinforcements for battles that ha of tanks that happen on track zero. Here, let me switch that back, because everybody's gonna be like, you're cheating. Um, supply depots, uh, if you own them, add a supply or add a support point per week that you were currently in that contract. The, a hostile supply depot equals 5% modifier to Op4's battle value budget on that track. So in other words, when you fight on that track and the enemy owns a supply depot, they'll get a slight increase in units in their battle value budget. And so that'll equate to more mechs, more tanks, more infantry, what have you. Uh, next, we have the data center, which has no effect if the enemy owns it, but if you capture a data center, it will reveal the entire track, including um, hidden scenarios that you haven't seen. So, so if you want to be like, if you're like, I don't want to recon the rest of this track, but there's a data center over here I can capture. If you manage to capture that data center, it will reveal the whole thing. Next, we have the industrial center. Doesn't really do anything, it just acts as an objective, usually for the purposes of strategic objectives located in the objective window. Uh, the comm center adds a modifier in favor of who owns it. 
outside of that i have no idea your mileage may vary if you figure it out please feel free to let us know um next the early warning center reduces the number of turns for allied slash enemy reinforcements to appear on the map if anybody's familiar with how uh deployment delay works in mega mech it affects that so it makes you show up to the, a reinforcement show up to the battle faster uh next we have orbital defense prevents aerospace uh nick is wondering if that is working nick's one of the developers uh and he's also the father of stratcon so uh if there if you do have an orbital de orbital defense facility under your control and you are still being hounded by enemy aerotech or bombers then obviously it's not working please feel free to let him know on their um on their uh, Mega Mech Discord. Just send one of the developers a note and let them know. Or possibly put in a ticket on their uh, GitHub page. And last but not least, base of operations. These are the big suckers. These are the huge facilities. These are like hard points for the enemy forces. They have more turrets. They have veteran units. They have better equipment, but if the base of operations is owned by the allies, which means you've either captured it or you started with it at the beginning of your contract, um, well, hold on. If allied, losing is an instant contract loss. Yeah, you don't wanna lose it if you start out with it. But if the enemy owns it, losing is one, four, one to four months of low contract activity. So it'll decrease the amount of units that they send at you. It'll decrease the amount of hostiles detected as you recon. So they're really good to take out possibly early on, but they're extremely difficult to take. So take that as you will. And I believe that's all the facilities types that they currently have in game. All right, that's done. Um, obviously, whether you capture a facility or you destroy a facility based upon the objectives located for the drop in a, um, in the, uh, briefing room, and I'll show you here, there is things, uh, objectives and notes underneath the scenario that will tell you how to capture the base. If you feel like you've captured it, awesome. Then all you gotta do is right click on it and I'll show you once again and go to switch owner. If you don't feel like you've captured the base and you've destroyed it during the, during the battle, you can just remove facility. I'm not gonna do that because it's supposed to be there and that will get rid of it. If you feel like that the, um, Allied data center or a data center that you've captured is not correctly revealing the map. They have that too. Or if you just don't want to recon, you can just click on reveal map here or reveal track. And it will only reveal the track that you currently have selected. Okay, next. Last but not least, we're going to get on to deploying units via Stratcon. And it's super easy. Super, super easy. So what you do is you go, I'm gonna attack this hostile tank base. So you right click on it, go to manage force assignment, and it will bring up this little window and it will show you all of your eligible lances inside of your company. So here you see we have all of our different ones. It will also, if like us, you use unit detachments, it will also show eligible detachments and support lances as well. Play that however you will, uh, but it will only read legal lances of units or stars if you're playing clan or level two if you're playing Comstar or Word of Blake. Your mileage may vary on that. Take that as you will. So what we can do is, um, and I don't really want to do this. Actually, I can talk about it. No, actually, I can do it this way. Yeah, let's deploy to an empty hex, because then I can just fast forward. Okay, so 
say where there's a hostile force detected in this hex, right click on it, go to manage forces and say, we're gonna send alpha lance to this, this hex. Say there's bad guys here and we have to take them out. So you would click on alpha or whatever lance you're planning on using. This is your drop lance and hit confirm. So they've been deployed. So now all I gotta do is go, um, if I want to, say for example, if I'm deploying um, to defend a facility, then you can right click on it again and you can go to Alpha Battle Lance Remain Deployed. They will stay there until you tell them not to. So I'm gonna click on that. So no matter how many days I advance, they'll just stay in that area. They won't move, they won't leave. But if a hostile force runs into them, or if a hostile force attempts to take a allied facility that you were currently defending, a battle will generate inside the briefing room. So we can just turn that off and then they'll come back. Um, some battles will allow you to deploy reinforcements and auxiliary units, and those super simple. I don't have those windows up and so I can't show you, but I can describe it to you. So once you've deployed a force, sometimes the window will pop up automatically. Sometimes you'll have to right click and go in and manage the force manually. Either way, the window is the same. And it will show you a window for reinforcements and you can pick which reinforcements you wanna send. They will show up delayed automatically. That delay is based upon their walk speed of the slowest mech in the lance of, for, that, for that lance and based upon strategy, the strategy of the rating of the Lance Commander. And the formula, if I'm not mistaken, is 12 minus the slowing, the slowest uh, units walk or cruise speed, as it could be a tank, minus strategy rating of the Lance Commander. So 12 minus walk speed minus strategy. And that should give you roughly the, the round that they show up on your reinforcements. Now that being the case, reinforcements are not guaranteed and sometimes reinforcements bring more bad stuff. Bear that in mind. If you have support points and you are deploying reinforcements to a battle, the reinforcements are guaranteed to show up. There is no reinforcement role, but it will eat a support point. If you have no support points, but you have victory points, it will automatically convert a victory point to a support point and eat the support point for each lance deployed as a reinforcement. Now below reinforcements, you're also gonna see a window that says uh, auxiliary units you can the lance commander that originally dropped not reinforcements the drop lance that deployed to that hex that battle can deploy a number of auxiliary units not lances individual units based upon their leadership skill the Lance Commander's leadership skill. So if they have a leadership of say three, you can deploy up to three auxiliary units. So tanks, infantry, aerotech, bombers, whatever, or even other mechs. It's totally up to you. It's your campaign, however you play it. Now, there's a caveat to that. That window, that auxiliary window will only display auxiliary units, so other, in other words, units that are not the company's primary unit. So in our case, we're running a mech company. So anything that isn't a mech is automatically an auxiliary unit. Tanks, aerotech, infantry, and battle armor. And VTOLs, those are technically vehicles. Anyway, but it will only display auxiliary units that have a battle value lower than the highest battle value unit you have in the drop lance. So if you're running a recon lance, 
and the heaviest unit or the heaviest mech you have in your recon lance is like 1300 BV. Only auxiliary units that are 1299 BV or less will uh, display in that window for you to deploy as auxiliary units to help you out in your battle. Now, all that aside, back to reinforcements. If you do not have victory points and you do not have support points in order to automatically and without any side effects to deploy reinforcements, there will be an imaginary role made in the background unbeknownst to you. And actually you can kind of see what the role is if you go to the command center. I think it'll display it in the daily activity log for you. If not, uh, then I'm, I have no idea where it's located, but I swear it's there. A, role, a reinforcement role will be made per lance that you cannot pay victory or support points for. That role will determine whether they show up later. So reinforcements can show up not only later, but even later later because they are reinforcements, or they won't even show up at all. Like they've been delayed so much that the battle's over before they even get there. The other side effect is, is that sometimes it'll incur bad events. Bad events can be everything from enemy bombers to pirates to any number of things. Um, I, I think I can look on the briefing tab here and show you briefly what they are. Yeah, so if we go to edit here, oh no, it won't do an after action report. But trust me, there's a list of bad events. There are also a list of good events too. And um, nine times out of 10 bad events will happen if you mess up on a reinforcement check. The best outcome on that, on, on that option is nothing bad happens. They show up and delayed like they would normally and you just move on with the rest of your uh, your campaign and your scenario battle all right i think that's it i think i've covered everything as far as i can remember i went over this i wrote notes down but i think that's mostly what everything that has to do with stratcon um at this point in time um if like i said before if you have any questions uh, please feel free to join the developers on their Discord server. I'll have a link of it to it down below. Or you can join us on our Filthy Casual Discord server and um, ask us questions there as well. Uh, but hopefully this helps. If you have any suggestions or ideas for a part five or a Mega Mech tutorial, um, dealing with the software, not so much battle tech rules, but just with the software itself, please feel free to shoot me a message or leave me a comment or send me an email. It's totally up to you. Uh, I guess that concludes our, um, what is this? What are we doing? Part four? I totally forgot. Yes. Part four. <coughs> Excuse me. That concludes our, uh, part four of our Mega Mech tutorial series. Mech HQ Stratcon. Um, there might be a part five. I don't know uh, if we need one. Awesome. Uh, but thank you guys so much for all the well wishes and all the awesome um, motivation to continue to do these tutorials. Uh, and we'll try to keep these updated as best we can as the, the software evolves. Uh, I hope everybody's looking forward to developing developer branch or development branch uh, version. I believe it's 4912. A lot of really awesome quality of life stuff going in. If you want to keep up to date with what's going on with Megamech, its development process and all the cool stuff that they're putting in, uh, please click on the link um, or uh, to go to the Megamech Discord uh, you can also get there via a link from the megamech.org website as well. And I look forward to seeing you guys. But until next time, signing off, Mech Warriors. Have a good night and take care.